चैप्टर टू माइग्रेशन टाइप्स कॉजेज एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस राम बाबू वर्किंग एज एन इंजीनियर इन भिलाई स्टील प्लांट छत्तीसगढ़ वॉज बॉर्न इन अ स्मॉल विलेज ऑफ डिस्ट्रिक्ट भोजपुर बिहार एट एन अर्ली एज ऑफ ट्वेल्व ही मूव टू अ नियर बाई टाउन आरा टू कम्प्लीट हिज इंटरमीडिएट लेवल स्टडीज ही वेंट टू सिंदरी झारखंड फॉर हिज इंजीनियरिंग डिग्री and he got a job at bhilai where he is living for the last 31 years his parents were illiterate and the only source of their livelihood was meager income from agriculture they spent their whole life at that village ram babu has three children who got their education up to the intermediate level at bhilai and then moved to different places for higher education first one studied at allahabad and mumbai and is presently working in delhi as a scientist the second child got her education from different universities of india and is now working in usa the third one after finishing her education settled at surat after marriage this is not a story of only ram babu and his children but such movements are increasingly becoming universal trend people have been moving from one village to another from villages to towns from smaller towns to bigger towns and from one country to another in your book fundamentals of human geography you have already learned about the concept and definition of migration migration has been an integral part and a very important factor in redistributing population over time and space india has witnessed the waves of migrants coming to the country from central and west asia and also from south east asia in fact the history of india is a history of waves of migrants coming and settling one after another in different parts of the country in the words of a renowned poet फिराक गोरखपुरी सर जमी ए हिंद पर अखवाम ए आलम के फिराक काफिले बसते गए हिंदुस्ता बनता गया द कैरवंस ऑफ पीपल फ्रॉम ऑल पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड केप्ट ऑन कमिंग एंड सेटलिंग इन इंडिया एंड लेट टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ इंडिया सिमिलरली लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल फ्रॉम इंडिया टू हैव बीन माइग्रेटिंग टू प्लेसेज इन सर्च of better opportunities especially to the countries of the middle east western europe america australia and east and southeast asia indian diaspora during the colonial period british period millions of the indentured laborers were sent to mauritius caribbean islands trinidad tobago and guana fiji and south africa by british from uttar pradesh and bihar to reunion island guadeloupe and martinique and suriname by french and dutch and by portuguese from goa daman and diu to angola mozambique to work as plantation workers all such migrations were covered under the time bound contract known as girmit act indian immigration act However the living conditions of these indentured laborers were not better than the slaves The second wave of migrants ventured out into the neighboring countries in recent times as professionals artisans traders and factory workers in search of economic opportunities to Thailand Malaysia Singapore Indonesia Brunei and African countries etc and the trend still continues there was a steady outflow of india's semi skilled and skilled labor in the wake of the oil boom in west asia in 1970s there was also some outflow of entrepreneurs store owners professionals businessmen to western countries the third wave of migrants comprised professionals like doctors engineers 1960 onwards software engineers 
management consultants, financial experts, media persons, 1980s onwards, and others migrated to countries such as USA, Canada, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and Germany, etc. These professionals enjoyed the distinction of being one of highly educated, the highest earning, and prospering groups. After liberalization, in the 90s, education and knowledge-based Indian emigration has made Indian diaspora one of the most powerful diasporas in the world. In all these countries, Indian diaspora has been playing an important role in the development of their respective countries. Migration You are familiar with census in India. It contains information about migration in the country. Actually, migration was recorded beginning from the first census of India conducted in 1881. However, the first major modification was introduced in 1961 census by bringing in two additional components viz. place of birth that is village or town and duration of residence if born elsewhere. Further, in 1971, additional information on place of last residence and duration of stay at the place of enumeration were incorporated. Information on reasons for migration were incorporated in 1981 census and modified in consecutive censuses. In the census, the following questions are asked on migration. Is the person born in this village or town? If no, then further information is taken on rural, urban status of the place of birth, name of the district and state, and if outside India, the name of the country of birth. Second, has the person come to this village or town from elsewhere? If yes, then further questions are asked about the status rural urban of the previous place of residence, name of the district and state, and if outside India, the name of the country. In addition, reasons for migration from the place of last residence and duration of residence in place of enumeration are also asked. In the census of India, migration is enumerated on two bases. First, place of birth. If the place of birth is different from the place of enumeration, known as lifetime migrant. Second, place of residence. If the place of last residence is different from the place of enumeration, known as migrant by place of last residence. As per 2011 census, out of 1,210 million people in the country, 4,500.8 million, about 37% were reported as migrants of place of last residence. Streams of Migration A few facts pertaining the internal migration within the country and international migration out of the country and into the country from other countries are presented here. Under the internal migration, four streams are identified A. Rural to Rural R to R B. Rural to Urban R to U C. Urban to Urban U to U and D. Urban to Rural U to R In India during 2011, out of 455 million migrants Enumerated on the basis of last residence, 141.9 million had changed their place of residence in the last 10 years. Out of these, 118.7 million were intrastate migrants. The stream was dominated by female migrants. Most of these migrants related to marriage. The distribution of male and female migrants in different streams of intrastate and interstate migration is presented in figure 2.1a and 2.1b. 
It is clearly evident that females predominate the streams of short distance rural to rural migration in both types of migration. Contrary to this, men predominate the rural to urban stream of interstate migration due to economic reasons. Apart from these streams of internal migration, India also experiences immigration from and emigration to the neighboring countries. Table 2.1 presents the details of migrants from neighboring countries. Indian Census 2011 has recorded that more than 5 million persons have migrated to India from other countries. Out of these, about 88.9% came from the neighboring countries, Bangladesh followed by Nepal and Pakistan. Spatial Variation in Migration Some states like Maharashtra, Delhi, Gujarat and Haryana attract migrants from other states such as Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, etc. Maharashtra occupied first place in migrants followed by Delhi, Gujarat and Haryana. On the other hand, Uttar Pradesh was the state which had the largest number of net out migrants from the state. Causes of Migration People generally are emotionally attached to their place of birth, but millions of people leave their places of birth and residence. There could be variety of reasons. These reasons can be put into two broad categories. First, push factor. These cause people to leave their place of residence or origin. And second, pull factors, which attract people from different places. In India, people migrate from rural to urban areas mainly due to poverty, high population pressure on land, lack of basic infrastructural facilities like healthcare, education, etc. Apart from these factors, natural factors such as flood, drought, cyclonic storms, earthquake, tsunami, wars, and local conflicts also give extra push to migrate. On the other hand, there are pull factors which attract people from rural areas to cities. The most important pull factor for majority of the rural migrants to urban areas is the better opportunities, availability of regular work, and relatively higher wages, better opportunities for education, better health, facilities, and sources of entertainment, etc are also quite important pull factors. Examine the reasons for migration for males and females separately in figure 2.2. On the basis of the figures, it can be seen that reason for migration of males and females are different. For example, work and employment have remained the main cause for male migration, 26% while it is only 2.3% for the females. Contrary to this, about 67% of females move out from their parental houses following marriage. This is the most important cause in the rural areas of India except in Meghalaya where reverse is the case. In comparison to these, marriage migration of the male is only 4% in the country. Consequences of Migration Migration is a response to the uneven distribution of opportunities over space. People tend to move from place of low opportunity and low safety to the place of higher opportunity and better safety. This in turn creates both benefits and problems for the areas where people migrate from and migrate to. Consequences can be observed in economic, social, cultural, political, and demographic terms. Economic Consequences A major benefit for the source region is the remittance sent by migrants. Remittances from the international migrants 
are one of the major sources of foreign exchange. In 2002, India received US dollar 11 billion as remittances from international migrants. Punjab, Kerala and Tamil Nadu receive very significant amount from their international migrants. The amount of remittances sent by internal migrants is very meager as compared to international migrants but it plays an important role in the growth of the economy of the source area remittances are mainly used for food repayment of debts treatment marriages children's education agricultural inputs construction of houses etc for thousands of poor villages of bihar uttar pradesh odisha Andhra Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, etc. remittance works as lifeblood for their economy. Migration from rural areas of eastern Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Odisha to the rural areas of Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh accounted for the success of their green revolution strategy for agricultural development. Besides this, unregulated migration to metropolitan cities of india has caused overcrowding development of slums in industrially developed states such as maharashtra gujarat karnataka tamil nadu and delhi is a negative consequence of unregulated migration within the country demographic consequences Migration leads to the redistribution of the population within a country. Rural urban migration is one of the important factors contributing to population growth of cities. Age and skill selective out migration from rural areas have adverse effect on the rural demographic structure. However, high out migration from Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and eastern Maharashtra have brought serious imbalance in age and sex composition in these states similar imbalances are also brought in the recipient states what is the cause of imbalance in sex ratio in the place of origin and destination of the migrants social consequences migrants act as agents of social change the new ideas related to new technologies family planning girls education etc get diffused from urban to rural areas through them migration leads to intermixing of people from diverse cultures it has positive contribution such as evolution of composite culture and breaking through the narrow considerations and widens up the mental horizon of the people at large but it also has serious negative consequences such as anonymity which creates social vacuum and sense of dejection among individuals continued feeling of dejection may motivate people to fall in the trap of antisocial activities like crime and drug abuse environmental consequences overcrowding of people due to rural urban migration has put pressure on the existing social and physical infrastructure in the urban areas this ultimately leads to unplanned growth of urban settlement and formation of slums shanty colonies apart from this due to over exploitation of natural resources cities are facing the acute problem of depletion of groundwater air pollution disposal of sewage and management of solid wastes others migration even excluding the marriage migration affects the status of women directly or indirectly in rural areas male selective out migration leaving their wives behind put extra physical as well as mental pressure on the women migration of women either for education or employment enhances their autonomy and role in the economy if remittances are the major benefits of migration from the point of view of the source region the loss of human resources particularly 
highly skilled people is the most serious cost the market for advanced skills has become truly a global market and the most dynamic industrial economies are admitting and recruiting significant proportions of highly trained professionals from poor regions consequently the existing underdevelopment in the source region gets reinforced